Hello and thank you for joining me today. My name's Heather Forgan. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in Scotland. My website is www.stampwithnelly.com. Today I've, I'm going to show you how to create this cute card with the fun pattern play stamp set. Um, as you'll see, we've used um, this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. And of course that sentiment as well. Um, so only using one stamp set, I'm using three um, ink pads. And the most important thing I'm using to do is the Stamparatus. Now, if you haven't seen the Stamparatus um, and you have a catalogue, head on over to page 164 of the catalogue and you'll see all of the different elements um, that you can have with your Stamparatus. The Stamparatus comes um, with this magnetic base. You get two magnets. You also get this foam um, insert and you get two separate plates. And as you can see, they, oops, they hook in either at the top or at the side or you can turn it whichever way you want. Um, and because you've got two open sides here, you can use this on some rather large projects. You'll see that I've got a piece of paper in there. Um, this is an extra that you can buy and it's a pad um, that has both um, inches on one side and centimetres on the other. And it does just help make sure that um, you've got things exactly where you want them. So I'm, I've cut a piece of Whisper White card to measure 10 centimetres by 14 centimetres. So I'm using the centimetre side of the paper. Um, and I know that these are the, the marks I want um, to line up my card with. But because I've got the grid line, I can make sure that I've got it lined up all the way down the length of the paper. As I say, you've got two magnets. I've put a piece of washi tape or um, low tack tape on this one, which just makes it easier for me to pick up. I find it, um, sometimes that it's quite difficult for, for my fingers um, to pick up these ones. They're really strong magnets. There's a place that you can put the spare magnets underneath there as well. Um, word of caution, don't let them get too close together because they will smash together and uh, you will have tiny bits of magnet that are really, really sharp absolutely everywhere. I've not done it, but I know of other people that have done it. So when you want to um, line up your stamp where you want it, I'm just going to put it roughly there. It's, it's obviously wider than my piece of card, which is another great um, use of having this there. It means that you're not getting um, ink on your mat. Now, as you'll see, it, it does kind of, the, the photopolymer stamps will kind of stick the first time. So again, that's why I make sure that I know exactly where I want my card to be. So if it does stick, then I can just realign it so that it's perfectly where I want it. I am using the, the foam mat in there as well and that's because I'm using a photopolymer stamp. If I'd been using a red rubber stamp then there's no need to have that mat there because you've got that um, sort of spongy bit in your stamp as well. So that gives you that little bit extra height on your platform but also um, gives you the, the sort of spongy effect um, which helps give you a nice clean um, impression on your card. So what I tend to do is use my stamp set there because it's a perfect height um, of the, the platform so that you got um, a nice firm basis for adding your ink. So I'm using 
Highland Heather, most appropriately. And what I'm going to do is show you that, if I just plonk that down, I'll take my bone folder out of the way, then if I lift it up, oh, I've missed a bit, I've not stamped it right. All you need to do, put it back down, add a little bit more pressure onto it, lift it back up. Maybe I didn't get enough ink on that bit there. I can do it again, just tapping my ink onto the stamp. There we go, perfect. Okay, and the great thing about this is that you've then got this hinge step. So you bring it down one, ink it back up again, bring it back down. Add a little pressure, lift it up. And if your card has moved, you can just put it back to where you want. Lift it up, bring it down. And this means that you're, when you're stamping these lines, they are all perfectly parallel without you having to even think about it. Okay, now, this is, is going to get in my way, so I'm just going to move that up there. Bring it up again. Bring it over, press it down. Perfectly happy with that. I think this might be the last one. So as I say, you've got that all the way down there. Nice and uniform. So I don't really need to use um, my platform any longer um, because the rest of it is a bit more abstract. But what I'm going to do is give this stamp a bit quick clean. You'll see that it's already kind of very pink, um, but that really doesn't matter at all. If I was to put that back on there, that pink colour that's on there doesn't transfer onto there. So it's stained the stamp, but it is not making the slightest bit of difference to how useful um, the stamp is. That staining doesn't transfer over at all. Okay. And the chamois is really good if you happen to get some uh, ink on there as well. It just makes it nice and easy. And as, as you can see, mine is well, well used. Um, it's probably due an appointment with the washing machine. Um, but all you need to do is take it to the sink, rinse it through. Um, a lot of the, the ink will come out and again, won't transfer onto your, your stamps. Um, if you're not going to use it for a while, I would suggest that you let it dry completely so that it doesn't get any mould or anything on it. But mine is used every day. So um, I simply uh, rinse it out at the end of the day and put it in this old spare stamp case um, and then use it the next time. Okay. So I'm going to just pop that back on there because I've got that mat and with photopolymer it's always um, good to use um, a mat underneath your stamps. Now I would normally use uh, this mat here um, which I'll list in the, in the products that I've used um, even though I've not used it. Um, but because I've already got that on there I'm just going to stick with it. Now, I could have used my Stamparatus for this, but I would have to do it all the way down there and then move it and then do it all the way down there. But this stamp, which I'm going to use with Gorgeous Grey, when you look at it, it's not in a straight line anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm quite happy to um, freehand stamp this one. few light taps and 
and just eyeball it to line up all the way through. And you don't have to be straight with this one, so you can just have at it. You don't need to take your time and line things up terribly accurately. And I think I've done, yeah, I have. Look at that. <laughs> Bear with me a second and I will just make sure I take the worst of that off so I don't transfer it onto my card. And I'll move that out the way. Occupational hazard. Getting yourself covered in ink. I quite like it actually. <laughs> I know I've had fun if I've got inky fingers or ink under my fingernails. That one's always a good one because that takes a wee while to come out. Um, right, so we've done that one. That's me finished with the gorgeous grape. And I want to bring in the um, melon mambo. Now I've still got the old style ink pad of that. I've not treated myself to a new one of those yet. In fact, I just recently re-inked this one, so it'll probably be going strong for quite a while. And with this, just twist and turn it so that they're not all uniform. I'm going to do this one slightly differently from the, the last one. The last one I did dots as well as these kind of sparkles. I like to mix it up. out the way before I get that all over my hands again. Right, so we've we've got this piece here and that's us finished with our stamparatus. I'll just put that magnet there as well. Okay, and I'll clean those stamps up afterwards. I've done a lot of the other preparation um, because really what I wanted to show you was the hinge step of the stamparatus. Um, so I've got a gorgeous grape card base, just the line, which was 21 by 14 and a half centimetres scored on the long side at 10 and a half. That's what I normally use um, for my card bases. going to adhere that. I've also cut um, using the stitched rectangle dies um, a piece of Highland Heather card. I've stamped the cue the confetti with Melon Mambo ink and I've cut that with a stitched rectangle and got a larger one to layer with that. I also used one of the other stamps, this chevron one, um, with Highland Heather ink onto Whisper White, just repeated that again and cut that out um, with another one of the stitch rectangles. So I'm going to layer those two together, those two together, and then put them on. So in with the glue. And as always, you don't want to put a huge thick line of glue on there. It's um, You don't want it to be too high um, because then it's just going to squish about the place and it could make your, um, give you a wrinkle around your, your card, um, which we'd rather avoid. Happy with 
that. Bone folder's great for just making sure that you've got it all adhered nicely. on that one <laughs> okay so glue onto the back of this and I just chose to put it up in that corner roughly the same distance that way and that way relatively straight is it yeah not too bad <laughs> now with this bit I forgot to get my Stampin' Dimensionals out at the same when I was doing my prep. I want to overhang that there. So I know that that is going to glue down. Um, and actually I want it again to be roughly same distance that way and that way. So that bit there is going to get glued. This bit, these three corners there, I'm going to put a Stampin' Dimensional on. So that's the bit that's going to get glued and those are the bits there. So I'm just going to put some glue on there, take the backings off. Pop them in my bin because they end up absolutely everywhere. There we go. So those three bits are up and that bit is just going to get glued down there. Final touch is to add some rhinestones. Which I should have got out my box beforehand. And I am going to use the pick a tool. Um, this is another great bit of, of kit. Um, you've got a really pointy bit there and you've got a spatula bit there. Um, you've got this that has some, um, it's kind of like blue tack, um, so it's a, it's a sort of putty, um, which is great for picking up um, individual sequins and you get refills for that as well. And it also comes with this other insert, which is great for doing scoring. Um, so I'm just going to lift up these pop them, what big one they are, where I want them to be, just random. There we go. Now as that's kind of a dark colour to um, write on, on this one I've also added an insert which is the same size as the, the piece that was stamped on the front and just continued that um, line down the bottom. So we'll just do exactly the same for this one too. Should have got it the right way around. And there we go. One completed card ready for you to write your congratulations mes message inside whatever the confetti is in in order of. There we go. Let's see. Slightly different because I didn't use the um, dots this time around. I just stuck with the, the ones that are more like confetti. I hope you um, have enjoyed this um, tutorial. Um, if you're interested in buying any of the products that I've used, 
um, there will be a link to my blog in the description below and you can click on that, see all the products that I've used and then click on the product links to visit my online stamping up shop. If you already know what you want to purchase, then there's a link direct to my shop in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Until the next time. Bye.